Hello everyone. Good morning, good evening from wherever you're joining in. Uh, uh, and welcome to yet another webinar by Product School. Uh, and today's topic is behavioral interviews for product managers. Uh, before we get into the topic for today, a uh, quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Zafir Reis. Uh, I'm currently working as a senior product manager at Zalando, uh, which is one of Europe's largest fashion e-commerce marketplace. Uh, I'm based out of Berlin. Uh, and uh, before Zalando, I have been associated with uh, uh, different edtech uh, uh, domain products, uh, with uh, e-procurement products and marketplace products. So, uh, coming to the topic for today, behavioral interviews. Uh, first, let us try to understand what are behavioral interviews. So, behavioral interviews are uh, interviews where the questions tend to focus on a candidate's past experience to assess how they navigated through specific situations and challenges and how well did they utilize their skills which are relevant to the position that you have applied for. Uh, these are typically the questions uh, that, that start with things like, uh, tell me about uh, a time when X, Y, Z, or uh, has there been a, a, a situation in your previous organization where you've achieved uh, or where you've built uh, a, you know, a product but faced a lot of challenges. So these questions would typically like to go back in your past, go back in your previous roles and want you to give examples of how you, or how, how you have performed uh, in a particular situation that the interviewer uh, has in mind for you. Uh, what it does is it is used to predict future performances uh, based on your previous experience rather than speculate on your future performance based on what you're saying. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a way of validating the, the, the skills that you are talking about or skills that your resume talks about through real life examples that you actually encountered. Uh, hence, it's it's really important that you support all your answers with real life examples from your uh, past experiences or past roles. Uh, the interview, uh, the the behavioral question uh, actually does not end with things like uh, you know tell me something about yourself. That's just to start. What follows is 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 a whole round of follow up questions, uh, which which may pick one particular point that you said and it it will go on so uh, uh you know tell me something about yours uh sorry uh it the question might be something like tell me about the time uh when when you had when you had to make a uh a short-term sacrifice for a long-term goal now based on the answers that you give uh the interviewer might take something out from there and then probe further on that uh, what it does is it removes the ambiguity uh, in the entire hiring process. Uh, uh, it, 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 is, it is made to know you better uh, as a candidate. It's for the company to know you better as a candidate and to know how, how uh, do, do you fit into the principles that they have or do you fit into the company values that are there or the product values that are there. Uh, it also reduces the opportunity for the candidate to lie. Uh, now, uh, now we all agree that uh, right that uh, when when you're hiring for a particular role, you do not want the candidate to lie. Uh, that that's the worst thing you can do. Uh, you you should never lie in your resume in your interview. But yet, there's a, there's a there's a way to present yourself. There's a way to narrate the different stories that you're going to talk about in behavioral interviews, and that's what we are going to touch upon today as to how do you narrate your story in a better manner. Uh, generally, what happens uh, in uh, uh, in an interview is uh, candidates tend to glorify uh, their skills. Uh, candidates tend to boast about what they've done, and hence this is like a fact check that the organization or the hiring company is doing uh, for you. Uh, let us now try to understand why are behavioral interviews uh, uh, so important, you know, if you've already not got that from the previous slide. Well, yes, behavioral interviews play a very important role in any hiring process. And when I say any hiring process, that means it is not limited to only product management. You would have a behavioral interviews as a vital piece of the hiring process in a lot of different roles as well. You know, be it engineering, uh, be it data related role, or be it marketing related role, because that's what you're doing uh, doing when you're on the job. Uh, you're you're working with real life challenges. You're uh, uh, facing different situations, and that's what adds to your experience and makes you a better uh, uh, professional in your work life. 
Uh, the interviewer is trying to ask, uh, assess your practical experience instead of your theoretical knowledge. Uh, the interviewer does not want to know if you know all the formulae, if you know all the metrics. The interviewer wants to know is how you have implemented it. Uh, it moves away from a lot of non-consequential interview rounds. Uh, you know, uh, 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 for example, uh, I the one that I never really liked was the guesstimate uh, type of interview questions. Well, it, well, it does not really add a lot of value uh, to the company that I'm applying for. So uh, let's assume I'm I'm applying to an Amazon or a Google, uh, and uh, the question that is asked is uh, how many pizzas are delivered in the city of New York every day. Uh, now that I agree that it does help uh, showcase your analytical skills, but I don't think the kind of problem that you're solving is, is a very uh, relevant problem. Hence, organizations have moved uh, these types of analytical questions to something which is which is more real, right? Uh, and which is more specific to the product uh, that you're applying for. So hence, it, it allows organizations to move away from non-consequential interview rounds. Uh, hiring is an expensive activity. Uh, when a new candidate is hired, it's not only the uh, you know the investment that the uh, uh, that the company is doing in in the entire hiring process. Uh, it goes beyond that. When someone new joins in, there's there's a certain time, uh, there's a certain pool of period which which is involved where the candidate is onboarded, and you do not really get onto the job from day one. Uh, you need to be onboarded. You need to learn. Uh, how the company functions, you need to understand the product. So there is an investment even after the candidate is hired. Hence, organizations are ready to commit a type one error rather than commit a type two error. Uh, well, what's a type one error? A type one error may be in this case, when, a when the company loses out on a deserving candidate, right? So they're ready, uh, let's say out of uh, uh, hundreds of deserving candidates, they're ready to let go of maybe 90 90% uh, of those candidates but what they're not ready to do is they're not ready to hire a bad candidate right so uh, out of 100 if if 15 candidates are good and if they do not hire anyone they are okay with that right but out, if out of the five candidates they hired if one or two are not up to the mark and that's an error that they want to avoid so hence they they would uh, they are ready to sacrifice good candidates, but they are not ready to, uh, you know, uh, hire candidates who they they may seem uh, not up to the mark. Uh, it, it, it's it's an art uh, that can be mastered through practice. Behavioral interviews are not that difficult, uh, and that's what we're going to learn today. Uh, you know, uh, uh, to to just give you an understanding, uh, the kind of questions that would come, you're already aware about that. It's just how well you prepare for it and how good your narration is of of your uh, of the way you've behaved uh, in your previous experience that's what makes all the difference uh, and finally as i've said uh, candidates are ready to commit a type one error so they will there will always be companies who would uh, who would uh, you know who would make a mistake who would commit an error of not hiring uh, deserving candidates and so you don't have to beat yourself up uh, it's on the company and they probably just lost a very good candidate and it's not the end of the world. Okay, so let's look at the preparation. So I have a stepwise uh, preparation in place, which I have also used in the past. Uh, it's a five step process. Uh, coming to the first step uh, is the question bank. Uh, I, I call this step as the as the question bank. Now what it does is it uh, allows uh, what the step demands is that you create a repository of questions, um, you know, maybe in an Excel or on Google Sheet, of all the questions that you have come across uh, in your experience. Uh, it allows you to go deeper into your uh, career history and uh, start detailing your uh, story in a star format. Uh, before we get into that, uh, let me first actually tell you uh, about the question, uh, you know, about why should we have this question back? Uh, well, what the question bank does is it allows you to be unsurprised. Uh, yeah, if, if, if that's a word, it allows you to be unsurprised when a question comes up. Uh, as I said, you know, it, this is an interview format where you probably know all the questions that can come up. And trust me, uh, there are about, I would say, 10 to 15 uh, questions which, which can be asked to you in different manner. Hence, it is always a, a, a good practice 
to make sure you have a list of all the questions that you've uh, you've come across in your uh, in your career. Uh, 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 you know, uh, product management is an increasingly popular role, and it is a very critical and strategic role uh, for an organization. And uh, hence, the kind of questions would be around uh, you know the strategy uh, of things. Uh, make sure uh, what's important over here is make sure that you've actually done what you're saying. Uh, do not lie in an interview. Yes, you need to you need to say it in a particular manner, but that does not mean uh, that you're lying uh, about anything or you're, you're falsifying facts uh, while presenting it in the interview. Uh, and I always say this: a PM interview, a product management interview, behavioral interview is not a one month or a six month preparation. It's a continuous preparation. It's a rigorous preparation, even when you're not looking for a, a for a change or when you're not looking for an opportunity. It's an ongoing process. Every day on your job, uh, you are uh, actually preparing for it. Uh, you know, even even though you do not know, but you should always have this thing in your mind that uh, when I'm working on something, I'm actually uh, uh, you know preparing for a future uh, interview, and it's hence it is a very uh, rigorous uh, exercise. So uh, yes, now coming back coming back to the steps. First thing is create a repo repository. Uh, now I have actually created a repository of questions, uh, uh, and I, I will share the link of for the repository in the comments uh, after this webinar. What the repository does is uh, it allows you to know all the questions beforehand that can come. Right now, in an exam, if you know the questions, you can be better prepared. Well, this is not. This is definitely not cheating. But it's just your preparation, right? Uh, now, this is this is what the syllabus for the exam is. Now, what you're doing is you're creating your own syllabus, right? So gather as many questions as possible. Uh, you know, maybe in your previous interviews or something that you come across in the on the internet, or uh, you know, if if uh, if one of your colleagues has told you about a question, just make sure you have all the questions there in one place. Uh, once you have that, you need to go deep. Uh, into your career history and start detailing out your story uh, in the star format. Yes, this is a story. It's a story where you are the protagonist and you have to narrate it in a particular manner, which is the star format. For those of you who do not know, the star format starts uh, stands for situation, uh, task, action, and eventually what is the result uh, that you uh, uh, that you uh, manage to deliver uh, or out of the out of what you did in this particular situation uh the, the situation could be a quick description of what the project or initiative was about uh the task is what you did uh, or what you were supposed to do what your responsibility in that particular situation was the action is uh the 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 things that you did right so the changes that you made for example if you came up with a solution for a particular part uh problem how did you come up with the with the with the solution, what did you do to implement that solution? Did you do an A/B test, right? Did you run through it? Did you do uh, any kind of a user research on that? That's what you have to uh, showcase. And finally, the result. This is really important. I think this is the make or break of of these particular questions. Is what is the impact that you created? Uh, document your big achievements in a document, uh, right? Uh, so be, what this means is. In your day to day, uh, uh, in your day to day job as a product manager, or in any role that you are actually, and even if you're trying to transition into product management, uh, what you should do is every big achievement that you have done in your present job, start documenting that. Right. So if you launched a new feature, if you successfully conducted an A/B test, start making a note out of this. Uh, once you've made a note out of this, uh, and uh, it, it's really important that you make a note out of this because you tend to forget this minute details as things uh, progress. So, uh, you know, maybe after a couple of years, you might not remember what you did uh, back then, but it will be very crucial for this interview. Hence, note down all the details. How did you help? Uh, whom did you help? What were the numbers associated? Uh, associated with it and this is the preparation that you're doing for a possible uh, interview in the future once you have all the details in place keep tweaking the answer till the time you have the best version of that answer when i say keep tweaking the answer what i mean is start writing it in the star format uh, you know with with the situation 
uh, the task uh, uh, action uh, uh, and result. Uh, and finally, always and always include numbers uh, in the result. Uh, you know, you could include numbers, you could include dollar values, you could include metrics in your stories uh, to end it. Uh, now, this could be anything like I increase the revenue of the product or the company by uh, X, X dollars. Uh, I onboarded X new clients on the platform or it would also be I uh, improve the MAU that is the monthly active users on the platform by so and so percentage. So always make sure that you have numbers at the end and this will make sure that you make an impact uh, with the interviewer. Uh, uh, so just to give you an idea, this is this is this is the question back that I prepared. Uh, I I maintain this Excel where you have the questions on one side and then you start formulating your answers. So this is a repository of all the questions that I have come across. Uh, uh, you know, in my experience, and as as I've said, you know, I will have the link of this uh, repository uh, in the uh, in the comments after the webinar. Cool. Now let's look at an example question, uh, example behavioral question to understand how to answer this uh, 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 question. The question over here is: uh, Let me tell uh, uh, tell me about a time uh, when you made a short term sacrifice for a long term goal. Right. So this is the question. Uh, assuming this is the question that the interviewer is asking me. Now I, as a candidate, how would I present this? So the first thing is I will start with the situation. And now for the situation, you have to give the interviewer a bit of a background about, uh, uh, you know, uh, what the situation was and what was the kind of challenge that you were facing. So I start off like this. Let me tell you about a time when we acquired a European company and a CEO and sales team wanted uh, to rush with the integrations so that we acquire new customers. Uh, and then you give uh, uh, a bit more information about the situation that you were in. So, you know, while I was with, uh, you, you can name the company from your pre previous experience and how did you acquire the company and why was this being done? So in order to attract European customers, the sales team wanted uh, to present a strong integration, right? So this was basically to acquire uh, new uh, uh, customers on the platform. Uh, what was my task? How am I uh, relevant in the story? So I was uh, I was tasked with being uh, uh, in charge of integrations because of my past integration experience. So you can say I was an integration product manager where your uh, integration was something that I looked after. I was supposed to work with both the European and the engineering team uh, to understand the product and scope of the integration and prepare a working demo for all the clients. So this is what my, uh, uh, this is what the task was, this is what was expected out of me. And then finally, how did I approach it? What are the actions that I took? So when I started with uh, the scoping work, I realized that there's a lot of work involved, right? So I'm giving, I, I'm bringing a story. So the, the, uh, there's, there's a start to the story. Uh, there is a description of the story. And then this is the actual story where, where the action is, is happening. Uh, uh, so I tell out, I, I, I speak about the problems that I had and what are the actions that I do. So I realized that there were a lot of uh, work involved, uh, and maybe it was not deliver. Uh, it was not possible to deliver in time with respect to integration. Even if I look at an MVP, uh, there were different things that I had to do. Right, so I had to support European currencies. Uh, uh, I had to support localization of different European languages. There was European number format, which is different from the uh, uh, the, the number format which is used in other parts of the globe. Now uh, there was SSO, which was supposed to be do, uh, supposed to be done. So I anticipated a lot of work uh, and I took an estimate from the engineering team for bare minimum integration work. Uh, the timelines went beyond the demo date. Uh, and, you know, at that point, what my sales team wanted me to do was it wanted me to cut corners and be ready for a demo within the timeline. Uh, timeline. Uh, and I realized that this would really hamper the quality of the product and would set a bad precedent uh, for the rest of the European clients. Uh, it also meant that, you know, I would be pushing the engineering team unnecessarily and I knew this would result uh, in, in bad quality product. No, what I did over here was uh, the short term sacrifice was that I was ready to let go of the immediate European client with whom the, uh, the supposed demo was going to happen. 
whereas the long term goal was i wanted to present a good product i wanted to present a good experience for future uh, european customers what could have happened in this case was if if the first demo was not good if it did not go well and i knew the product was not ready for a demo uh, you know it might have led to bad referrals uh, in the market as well hence uh, that's 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 a judgment uh, that that's a that's an analytical call that i made in this situation finally uh, you give out the result right so uh, what was the result so the result was that i convinced the sales team that we should either delay the demo or go for the meeting without a full fledged integration now what i'm doing over here is i'm giving the sales team uh, uh, you know a, a kind of like a choice and I'm I'm, I'm 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 involving them in in the decision making so that is also showing that you are a collaborative product manager uh, i offered to give the meeting uh, uh, in in such a scenario uh give the meeting give the demo in uh, in such a scenario uh, and in the end we did not get the client obviously because we we were not ready with it however the string of uh, european customers that we got because of a successful integration proved that quality should never be compromised for short term goals and that's how you should end uh, you can uh, uh, end the answer by linking it back to the question originally which was us uh, keep in mind that this should not go more than 2 to 5 minutes make sure that this is not a monologue uh, keep checking in with the uh, interview uh, you know if if the interview is following or if the interview needs any more clarity on any particular point so small pauses in this case uh, really helps uh, uh, make eye contact with the interviewer uh, and just uh try to gauge if the interviewer is is understanding or uh you know if there are any questions that he or she might have uh and just do not go very fast uh at the same time don't take a lot of time uh the next one is uh tell me something about yourself boy can it go can it get any more cliched uh, uh than uh, uh, this particular question now this in most cases will be the first uh question uh Uh, that you are asked uh, in an interview uh, uh this uh, uh it can be asked in a lot of different ways as well right so tell me something which is not on your resume or can you talk about your or your background and what do you do currently it can be asked in different format but it basically means the same thing now since it's a question which you know uh, in 95% of the cases would be asked as the first question it's a crime to be unprepared don't commit the rookie mistake of going unprepared on this and 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 assuming that hey it's he's just asking about me so i can tell them about you know yeah, there is a certain way to answer this uh, you need to be prepared if you want to make the maximum impact so not be unprepared for this uh, you need to have a very strong elevator pitch in this case uh, many companies also call this as ice breaker ice breaker question because it's it's supposed to break the ice between the candidate and the interviewer it's supposed to loosen things up uh, and you should also do the same uh, uh, with with the interview uh, uh also grab their attention and stand out from the crowd uh well my steps for this particular uh, uh interview question is you start with the most recent roles and go in reverse chronology order because that's what will uh, that's what the interview is looking for right uh, you, you interviewers would generally look at the last company that you worked for and in most cases they would expect you to go in the reverse order so start with the most recent role and go in the reverse chronology order you don't have to see all the companies make a good uh, assumption of what are the companies that you want to uh, talk about if you know if it's a company which has made a big impact sure you definitely need to bring that out uh you can then talk about the role uh, and the company name as i said and any major achievement uh, uh that you have had uh with uh with uh, with with this organization uh you know you can also give a description of the company uh if it's if it's a company which is not very well known uh you can also tell them that hey i work for company abc and this is this is what uh, it used to do or this is what the product was you don't want the interview to be in the dark as to what are the products that you uh, what are the kind of products that you worked on in the past uh, also make sure that if it's a competitor company uh, you might want to include that uh, in it because uh, companies generally want to have that competitive analysis and you might be a good uh, candidate in that case 
moving on you can add on the line about your education or uh, qualifications including any kind of certification which are relevant to this position uh, uh you know uh, one thing i generally follow is i also add a personal touch uh at the end uh this could be anything about your hobbies or your interest uh, or any interesting fact about yourself uh what it does is it it uh you know interviewers interview a lot of candidates right and it's very difficult to remember all of them if you add a personal touch uh it it leaves an impression in the mind of the user and they start associating you with with that particular characteristic for example if you play the flute so you can say hey uh you know uh and also in my spare time i play the flute uh and i'm a very good flute singer and you know that might uh inculcate some interest in the interviews mind and there would be a better recall value for uh, you when when the evaluation is happening finally the icing on the cake is you tell the interview what makes you a good fit for uh, that role and so for example it can end with something like this and and that is the reason i feel uh, uh, you know i am a good fit for this particular that's how you can end it and where will you get uh, the lines for this well you can pick it up from the job description uh of uh from uh where you from where you've uh applied and this would also help out because the job description would most likely be uh written by someone in the interviewing panel so if you justify it if you tell them that this is why i'm the i'm a good candidate uh it would leave a good impression in the interviewer's mind again as an example uh you know uh, we can talk about something myself so uh start off with thanking the interviewer for this opportunity thank you uh xyz for this opportunity start off with your name uh, i have product management experience of seven years so if this is something that you want to highlight you can uh, say that uh you know these are the number of years of experience that you have in product management uh in my most recent role as a senior product manager at cornerstone on demand now over here i really want to highlight that it's a nasdaq listed company which means it's it's, it's a big company it's, it's not a small company uh, and I'm also telling them what it is about. So it's a company of employee management software products. Uh, what was I doing in Cornerstone? So I was enabling the entry into a $500 million PXP uh, 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 in in industry. Now, $500 million is, is a number. So as soon as you say numbers, you get all the years. Uh, so you know, try to try to put in some numbers of what the industry is all about. Uh, I was leading the discovery, design, definition, and delivery of two components in the in the in in on the platform. Now, if you see, this covers most of the things a uh, product manager should be doing. They should be discovering and pro identifying the problem. They should be designing and building it, uh, defining it from the engineering team, and finally delivering uh, uh, the feature. Uh, I'm also involved in user research, competitive analysis, running an early adopter program alongside guiding my engineering team. Now, a lot of these keywords is are something that you can get from the job description itself. So, uh, if the job description says we are looking for uh, someone who is an expert in user research, competitive analysis, etc., you can include them over here. But make sure uh, that you've actually done that because you'll need to, uh, you know, provide instances of how you've showcased these skills. Uh, in the past, I worked with Edcast, an e-learning startup where I scaled Government of India's Future Skills Prime Initiative to a million users within a year. Now, the reason I, I, I wanted to give one more example of the company that I worked for, because I wanted to showcase how I've made an impact on Future Skills Prime, wherein I, I uh, uh, you know, we were managed, we were able to scale it to a million users within a year, which according to me is a big achievement. And I want to talk about it. Uh, you talk about uh, you know your engineer your education background. So I'm an engineering graduate and a management postgraduate, CSPO certification because it is relevant. I talk about that as well. Uh, and finally, uh, so, uh, uh, you know give a personal touch. So apart from work, I frequently write articles and blogs on product management. Uh, uh, you know, the, you know uh, it, this is also an interesting way, where uh, interesting way in which you can link your hobbies to the characteristics of a product manager right so uh, and and this is not made up this is something uh, that i actually like and what is important is how you narrate it so uh, i write articles and blogs on product management this allows me to improve my storytelling and imp uh, and also improve my knowledge now these are the two things which are critical for a product manager storytelling and keep yourself up keeping yourself updated uh, with the latest happenings in the industry
uh, I consider myself as a lifelong learner. I'm always learning something new. Uh, I've been learning German for the past one year, and I've recently started rifle shooting. Now, this is something which will uh, get a lot of attention. So uh, people have asked me as well, hey, rifle shooting, can you tell me more about it? So, so that also allows you to build a rapport uh, with, uh, uh, the, uh, with the interviewer. Uh, finally, I see myself as an intentional product manager, not an accidental one. This is to showcase um, my keen interest in product management. Uh, and I think my experience in solving complex problems and working on 4D uh, makes me a good fit for this role. Now, this again can be from the job description. Uh, and uh, you, you can sum it up by saying uh, how for that particular position, what you have done in the past is relevant and why you should be hired. The next one is keywords. Uh, uh, keywords uh, are important. They're very important. Why? People don't like taking interviews uh, because it's not a part of their day-to-day -day activities. It's an add-on responsibility, and uh, uh, you know it's it's not something very enjoyable that they have to. Uh, they would like to do. They would rather uh, work on their product, and they would rather build new things. Uh, but you know it's a necessary evil that has to uh, go through. Uh, in such a case, you know, you might only be getting half their attention, uh, you know, when, when, when you're talking and hence keywords are really important. It's humanly impossible to remember everything that you, that is being said in an interview. Hence you, you try to give in keywords because what the interviewer will remember are the keywords that you've mentioned. So you get all the years, uh, when you utter the right keywords, uh, keywords depend on the discussion and the interview that's very important you, you you need to use the right keywords for the right audience example uh, if it's an interview with an engineering lead uh, and you are tested on collaborative product management then you know keywords like pushback agile iterative are the are the keywords that you should focus on so try to bring these in in your conversation uh, if you're interviewing for a round in analytical thinking and you know you're interviewing for something someone on the principle of analytical thinking Things like trade-off or cost-benefit uh, benefit analysis are, are the ones that will make the right impact and you will get all the use from the interview. Uh, keywords help only when the storyline is good. Now, please bear this in mind. They would help only if the story that you're narrating uh, in, in the behavioral interview has a good narration, has a is a good story, is, is something really impactful. Otherwise, simply uttering keywords will not really help you and you cannot fool the interview in this case. Uh, the fourth one are uh, the questions at the end, right? Now, in a typical interview, uh, the format of interview is as follows. You start off with an introduction, which is tell me something about yourself, where both the parties talk about themselves. Uh, then there is the to and fro of the questions, uh, which are asked by the interview and you're giving the answers. And finally, usually the, you know, the last 15 to 10 minutes are reserved uh, for questions from the interviewee, which is the candidate in this case. Now, uh, you know, don't assume that just because you are being, uh, you are, you, you have been given the opportunity to ask the question, your interview is over. Uh, well, that's not the case. Uh, you're still being judged. You're still being judged for the quality of questions that you're asking, for the attentiveness that you showcase in the interview. Uh, always make sure that you customize your questions based on the interviewer. Again, for for example. Uh, if you are interviewing with someone at a very senior level, you can ask questions about the vision of the product or the company. Uh, uh, if you are interviewing with the hiring manager, you can ask them as to uh, you know how what are the what what is it that will take to succeed uh, you know under un, under that particular person or what are the short term goals which are required to succeed uh, in uh, in his or her team. Whereas if if, if your interview round is with an engineering lead, you can ask questions about the synergies between product and engineering, or uh, you know the kind of uh, development practices that are followed, or the stack, or, or the or the technology stack which are uh, which is there, uh, uh, which is there, which is used by the tech, uh, engineering teams. So these are the kind of, kind of questions that you are asked at the end, and this does have an impact. You're still being judged even though you are asking the question over here. Uh, Finally, uh, mock interviews. Uh, so, product management business, uh, product management interviews are serious business, right? Uh, there are many paid services that conduct mock interviews and provide uh, feedback. Uh, 
Now, what happens in a mock interview is that a seasoned product manager will give you valuable feedback and point out your mistakes. Uh, you know, if you offer some, uh, if you offer a service like this. Uh, what I recommend is I, I definitely recommend uh, at least 10 to 15 mock interviews before appearing for the actual big one, right? So if you have a if you have an interview with the, with the company of your dreams, it is highly recommended that you at least have 10 to 15 mock interviews before that. Uh, you can also opt for peer to peer mock interviews. There are many platforms again uh, which do this service. How they work is if uh, you as a, a candidate, I mean two candidates who are who are preparing for let's say product management roles or any other role uh, as well, uh, can get together for a behavioral interview mock session where you can interview the person for half an hour and the uh, and and uh, the person interviews for half an hour and then you exchange feedback on how they perform uh, many a times when you're talking uh, when you're practicing yourself you are not self critical and that's where mock interviews help, really help uh, uh, in in getting over those barriers how did the mock interviews help me help me uh, well, it gave me real time feedback from a neutral point of view. Uh, so someone who's maybe not related to me, who's, who's not met me, who does not know me is giving me feedback. And that's how the actual interview scenario will also be. Uh, it allows you to learn from peers who are preparing. So, you know, you, you can actually see someone interviewing and how they perform in an interview and you can actually take some of the traits, uh, uh, that are uh, helpful for you. Uh, it allows you to time yourself, right? As I said in uh, in earlier, uh, uh, do not extend beyond two to five minutes for uh, you know for that particular question. So what it does, it also allows you to know. Uh, and this is the feedback that we get from uh, the one who you're having a mock interview with is how long did you take to give the answer for that? It also breaks some false assumptions about yourself. Uh, wherein you might think that the story is really powerful, uh, but it is always helpful to run it through with someone and at the end, it would not make sense to them. For example, uh, uh, you know, in my case, uh, I was uh, I was initially from an edtech background. Uh, and when I was talking about my achievements in edtech uh, to someone who's not from edtech, uh, it did not make a lot of sense to them. Uh, I was using a lot of terminologies, which which was alien. And hence, I had to improvise on that when uh, I also made sure that if I'm telling something which is not known, uh, I need to explain what that particular uh, terminology, uh, terminology, uh, terminology means. So that's what mock interviews does. It allows you to give uh, have a very neutral perspective of, of things. Uh, it also gives you some constructive feedback. Now, again, taking my example, uh, one of the constructive feedbacks that I got was uh, I, I use a lot of fillers. Uh, when I'm giving interviews, so you know things like you know uh, also mm, uh, the, the you know these are all fillers. So that's a feedback that I got, and uh, since then I've been really conscious about not using a lot of fillers when I'm when I'm talking, especially uh, in an interview. Uh, well, uh, these were the uh, five steps, as I mentioned, uh, that really helped me uh, in preparing for product in preparing for behavioral interviews for product management. Uh, and finally, what I would say is uh, uh, consistency and discipline. It's really important to be consistent and disciplined in your preparation. Start making a list of all the questions that you come across. Uh, and these questions can be asked in different ways, right? Uh, for example, uh, you know, one question uh, and, and you need to answer it for the question uh, 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 that you've prepared in, in, in a different way. Uh, example could be uh, the question is, tell me about a time uh, when you showcased high risk, high reward. Uh, now, let's say if this is a new question for which you have not really practiced or which or for a scenario that you do not have, uh, you can you can proceed like this. You can ask, you can always ask the interviewer, is it okay if I talk about my biggest product management uh, uh, achievement uh, and also talk about the pitfalls that I encountered on the way? Now, it's, it's a similar question, but you've just changed the wording. Uh, and in most likelihood, the interview will allow you to answer uh, this question. So you, you give out the answer that you have this for the situation you have. And you always conclude the answer, uh, 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 you know, uh, back to the question wherein you say, and this is when I showcase high risk, high reward uh, kind of behavior. Uh, Pre-interview research is really important. Research about the company and the interview beforehand. Uh, 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 
companies might have certain uh, principles. For example, Amazon has uh, the 14 leadership principles and the behavioral interviews are around that. Uh, uh, some company might have something else that they focus on. So make sure to use a lot of uh, resources which are available on the internet. Talk to people on uh, LinkedIn who are working for that organization. Check out the interview process on uh, Glassdoor. A lot of things that you can do, uh, which forms as the pre-interview research. Now, you know, um, another very common question in this case would be, why do you want to work for that company? And in that case, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the pre-interview research really helps. Uh, you can always split it into three points as to I want to work for this company because of so and so reasons. So the first one could be because of what the company is into and what the mission of the company is. The second one could be because how you how you like the product and how your interest in, is in that domain. And you know the third one could be something which is uh, very specific to the company culture. Uh, you know I remember for one of the companies I I I actually did mention that I went to your uh, a website and I noticed that you have. Uh, employees from a uh, uh, lo lot of distinguished, I mean, not distinguished, but uh, from various backgrounds, you know, from uh, people of uh, different races, people of different colors. And, and that's what I really like that you're you're such a multicultural organization. So um, that does two things. That's that that is a very genuine reply that you're uh, giving. E. It does not it is not a made up thing. And B, it also tells the interview that you have done the research, you've gone to the website, you've you've taken the effort to research about the company. So that would always help. Now, uh, and uh, you know, all, avoid cliched answers uh, while answering this question. Uh, have the confidence and don't lose hope. Uh, interviews can be stressful. I stressful. I agree. What you need to do is keep keep calm and keep trying, uh, and you will surely get it at the end. Uh, and always remember, uh, if you're not hired, the company is making a, a you know a type one error. They're just being cautious. And what you need to do is you need to prepare better for the next time. And finally, uh, customize. Uh, focus on the question bank. Customize the uh, 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 the structure of the stories. Remain the same. Uh, you need to answer it in the star format. The situation will remain the same. But customize the answer for every uh, interview. The way you want to portray it uh, would differ. You might have 10, 15 major instances that you want to highlight. The, the situations or the instances will remain the same, but the way you present it, the way you customize it for every question will change. So it could either be by uh, changing the question slightly and linking it back to the original question uh, or uh, uh, presenting it in a different manner. So that's really important that you customize. And for that, the Excel or the, the, the question bank comes in really handy because you know all the questions and you would also know that fit situation fits into a um, uh, with situation. You'll be surprised to know that one situation can fill or can fit into multiple uh, questions that are asked. So uh, that can only be uh, mastered through a lot of practice. Uh, and finally, remember that a job interview is not a test of your knowledge, uh, but it's a, it's it's your ability to use it at the right time. Right time. And uh, that just summarizes, uh, you know, behavioral interviews. Well, uh, that was uh, my time. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this. Uh, for any question, for anything, for any behavioral interview tips, you can always get in touch with me on LinkedIn. Give us my LinkedIn. Uh, and, uh, I will see you soon. Bye.